Hello, my name is Bruce Leibrand. Uh, this is the Remix Austin Meetup. Hopefully that's not a surprise. Uh, but also, because no joke, this has happened multiple times. If you don't know what Remix is, uh, it is a web framework currently built on React. It is not about remixing music. If that's what you're into, I think that's awesome. You just might be really bored. Uh, we'll see. Again, no joke, someone came and thought that was what the meeting was. Fortunately, they were just online, but they stayed for an hour before leaving. So just want to make sure if you like computer programming and web development, you are at the right spot. If you are not interested in those things, I'm not going to be offended if you leave. Um, and you can even take Chick-fil-A and I will not. <laughs> but yeah, we got to work on the branding. We're still we're still working through that because Remix is a loaded term. Um, cool. Well, welcome. Uh, if you're online, extra welcome. I uh, hope this is enjoyable. Let me know. I'll try and monitor the chat. Let me know if there are any sound issues or anything that I can help you with. Um, yeah, this is this building that we're in is the HEB Favor, um, head, not headquarters, digital headquarters, I guess. Uh, so it's a pretty cool building. If you're interested in HEB and HEB digital and whatnot, uh, talk to me or Adam actually is a pretty good person to talk to afterwards because um, we can tell you more about it and maybe even show you around the space. No promises. Uh, anyway, that all being said, yeah, thanks for coming. I'm super excited to be kicking off with Paul uh, for our first talk and then TC after that. Um, yeah, so we're gonna have some pretty cool talks and these will be recorded. So they'll be online later if you ever wanna reference anything or share it to, to a friend. If there's any like or any code I can I can get you afterward, I'll always try to, to get that to people. Um, man, any more housekeeping? Wait, wait, my slides. Oh, that was my mistake. Okay, please. Get your phones out and do the, do the silly phone thing. If you don't mind, uh, we, we just ask, like, basically, were you here? This is just for us to try and keep track um, of how many people are coming. It helps us with the food. Uh, it helps us, you know, get in contact with you if you're, if you're interested in different things. I also, there are questions on there that need to be on there that aren't on there, so that's my bad. Uh, that's the other thing. If you want to speak, uh, please reach out to me. You can talk to me afterwards. If you ever want to do a talk or whatever, I'll probably say that again at the end, so I'm not going to talk too much about that now. Okay, everybody's got on the phone. Everybody looks like they're looking at their phone. That's great. Um, so yeah, again, here's the agenda. This is what we're going to be doing tonight. Um, so from about 6.30 to 7.30 CST, we're going to be listening to some awesome talks and learning a lot about Remix and Remix adjacent technologies. And then um, at 7.30, ooh, excuse me, we'll have some more time just to chat and also for people to share if they're either looking for jobs or um, if their company is looking to hire people because uh, that's big part of these meetups is we want to make sure people are able to connect and network uh, appropriately. Yeah, cool. All right. Well, Paul, if you're ready, um, I know I, I, I put you on double duty there with filling out the form and, and that. So um, I can keep rambling. I have lots of things to talk about. Uh, like Chick-fil-A, they're so nice. And their customer service is always so good. It, it was amazing. The easiest experience I ever had. I was super stressed about it. All right. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty new to Remix, so please be kind. Um, anyway, uh, let's put this in. Let's take one second. Let's shake it up there. There you go. Nice. Uh, I figured I put a ridiculous picture of myself, so if the talk is boring. Uh, at least you remember this guy doesn't know how to wear headphones. I'm Paul. Uh, welcome. Uh, I'm a self taught developer, went too far too fast. And I work at Strapi as a developer advocate. Um, uh, this self-taught path is very important to me because I switched careers to tech uh, later in my life, actually in my late 30s. Uh, so it's never too late if the will is there, but I love uh, discovering and learning new things. And I just recently discovered uh, Remix. Actually, my first meetup was here. Uh, it was pretty awesome. So today we're gonna to talk about uh, fetching data using the use low, uh, loader data hook which is pretty fantastic. So on the agenda, um, I did not use TypeScript. So Remix, you are able to use TypeScript, but the good news, um, if you're just starting out, don't let it intimidate you. We're gonna talk about what the hell is the loader function, um, the magic of Remix, which is pretty awesome. And uh, you could get data from anywhere. Um, you don't have to implement it in Remix uh, directly, uh, which I'll share here. And then we're gonna talk about uh, using cache boundaries. And then I'll share a quick dem demo of what I've built so far. And so I did not use TypeScript um, even because Remix is too cool not to get started with it. Uh, don't wait to start learning Remix. Uh, literally, 
just start it in TypeScript. And if you're stuck because you see too many uh, red squiggly things, just rename the fi files to JS JSX. You'll be okay uh, because you don't need to be a TS expert. You could literally learn TypeScript as you learn Remix. So not trying Remix because you don't know TypeScript is a terrible excuse. So I wanted to uh, mention that uh, to all today. Uh, so what the hell is a loader function? That allows you to get uh, data, it runs on the server. Uh, you get the data before you render, which is pretty awesome. And you don't need to do extra state. For instance, uh, if you know the using use effect, you know that stuff. Uh, uh, in most cases, you don't need to do that. And you get the data back uh, via a hook. And so here's an example of a very simple implementation of the loader function. You'll basically do export a sync function called loader. You get access to the params. In this case, I'm getting a slug. I'm passing it into a function that I'll show you in a little bit. And then you just return the response as JSON. It's uh, pretty, pretty cool and convenient. And so the magic of Remix is that you actually get that data uh, easily accessible by using the use loader data hook. And this is uh, pretty awesome. So here's an example. Literally, I have a post route. I'm getting the data from using the use loader data, and I'm literally passing it to the thing that I want to display the post. And that's it. That looks like to me, that looks really nice and amazing. Um, and so that the magic, the remix, um, oh, I went backwards, but everybody knows remix is magical, not because I'm telling you this. And you could literally get the data from anywhere. You could do your own implementation of getting data from like your own uh, database. There's so many different ways of doing it. I decided to go with a CMS uh, because we have a lot of uh, clients that are, uh, you know, they're content ed editors, managers, so they want to have an easy way. And so what I learned from, not my experience, but I saw one of our clients show us a project, which was the front, with, front end was built with Remix and they used the CMS to power uh, the front end, and I was really amazed how quickly they were able to get up and running and solve their problem uh, for their client. So here's an example where I'm uh, fetching data from an API. I'm literally using fetch that you, is available to you in Remix. Again, fairly, uh, you know, basically I'm calling the API from my CMS and using fetch, which you basically get the data back. And I'll show you that in a demo in just a second. Um, and the coolest thing is you're able to do your error handling uh, by setting up uh, boundaries either in your nested route that you're in or in any of the routes that you have available to you. And literally you can throw an error from within your loader function. As you can see an example, I have a very basic example, but if the slug doesn't exist, say it's not found and throw uh, error and you're able to catch that using the catch boundary. And here it is, there's an example, I have a catch boundary function. So whenever there's a 404 error, this is what gets displayed. And we'll take a look in a second. And so demo time, and this is usually when things go wrong for me, so we'll see what happens. Um, so read something cool, here's a basic blog. So when I click on a post, it's basically firing the examples that I showed you. I'll show you that in code uh, just a second, make it. So it's readable. So within my app, in my routes, inside posts, I have this dollar uh, sign slot.jsx file. And this is basically what it looks like. Um, and it's pretty awesome. It looks, I like the fact that it's so clean and so uh, nice. Um, literally we have our loader function, something that I described to you where I am making a call. I'm getting posts from my CMS. In my case, I'm using Strapi. If we don't have the slug or it doesn't exist, just throw an error and we are catching it within this catch uh, boundary. And then if nothing goes uh, wrong, I'm literally uh, sending the data to my post component, which basically uh, displays what we see here on the screen, which is uh, pretty awesome. And so that was it for me. Uh, but if you have any questions, um, definitely we'll take some. Yeah, I'm on Twitter. Uh, I don't know why, but apparently there's a lot of tech people are on Twitter. So that's the <laughs> only saving grace. So thank you for being the voice of reason. And I also have a YouTube channel, Coding After 30, uh, uh, just as ridiculous as the picture I showed you. Uh, very passionate about the reality of what it takes to switch careers later in your life. If you've been on YouTube, there's always people that tell you in three months, you could have a Lamborghini, uh, but that's not how learning something that is hard 
uh, works. So thank you for your time and that's it. Hey, uh, are you able to hear me? Yeah. You have a question? Hey. Yeah, I have a quick question. Um, firstly, I have, I have no, I'm coming from totally like a base level, like a beginner level with Remix. Um, is, is there any like a recommendation to get started with Remix? Like uh, to you, uh, I, I think you mentioned you as a talk to so I'm, I'm myself too. So I'm just curious, like how you get started with Remix? Like, do you, did you start with the official documentation or like how, how does? So yeah, for me, uh, the documentation was a great resource and can see that has like, oh, that's, I have so many cool YouTube videos uh, and on their Remix YouTube channel. Uh, there's plenty of resources to get started. Uh, so definitely start the docs, check out the videos. And he literally has some examples where he goes over the stuff that uh, is outlined in the docs. And the one thing that I would say, start building something right away because through making mistakes, this, that's how you're going to like really pick up what you're learning. Gotcha. Thank you. And really awesome presentation. I'm just curious, oh. like, do you, do you, uh, did you use any type of like a, uh, uh, a coding to get this. I know that you can use TypeScript or JavaScript to uh, build demo slides. Oh no, I, I used Canva for. Uh, I, I'm like pretty lazy, uh, so I use Canva to build my uh, slides. Uh, therefore, also as you could tell by my presentation, I relied on my CMS to manage my data, something I didn't have to build from scratch. Also, and that's like what the beauty of you know, Remix. There's so many different ways that you could use it. And again, like uh, one cool example I saw. It, it was for a corporate website. Um, literally, they were able to build it with Remix uh, and literally use the same examples of how I fetch data in this presentation uh, to present most of the content on the website. And then they used the CMS and they were able to deliver that product uh, to their client like fairly quickly. And that's kind of something that I really like about Remix that depending on where you're starting, like even in my case being fairly new, I feel confident enough using a CMS and then using remix to start creating something that you know like a corporate website a blog what have you uh fairly uh you know straightforward i think you know i mean it's relative but whatever so, gotcha. so. thank you hey no, you're welcome awesome thank you great questions and amazing uh presentation i just wanted more kittens and puppies that was my only complaint <laughs> Not yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, uh, if anything, people will remember they either like kittens or and there you go. That's the way to do it. Yeah. 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 So thank you. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a bunch of angry people on my slides next time and see if like people <laughs> yeah. I get really negative feedback. Nice. Yeah. Psychological yeah. experiment. Exactly. I like. That. Uh, sweet. All right, TC, are you you ready? Let's make sure we can get this working. And again, if you haven't gotten food and you want food, there's food. I don't know if I, I don't know if I emphasize that enough yet. Hopefully it's just built in. We'll see. Um, also, there is just HDMI if that's easier. I don't know what you want. Sure, let's, let's try USB-C first. Yeah. Okay. Um. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is TC Schiller. I'm a staff software engineer at Indeed. I've uh, been there about a year and a half. I consider myself a front end engineer. Um, but in my 11 year career, I've done a little bit of everything like Microsoft stacks and database design and, and you name it. So um, I got into Remix uh, shortly after it was released. I was um, one of those who paid, I paid money for. <laughs> remix um but uh it, it's been a brilliant experience and uh yeah I've, I've learned a lot using it i decided to um build my portfolio site out of it and so when i was thinking about my portfolio site i said i, I want a way to talk to the world and so i thought okay well let's just build a chat but i'm not always on my portfolio site i mean it's my site but i'm i have other things to do so i thought what if visitors to my site can chat and then those messages come to my phone and it texts me and I can reply back through text message and it makes its way to the chat. And that was sort of the genesis of the idea. And um, so Remix is the, uh, the conduit for that. Um, so 
it turned out really great. I, I was really happy with it. So what I'm here tonight to show you is how a little bit of how this works. So um, this is Remix and Twilio, programmatic text messaging made easy. Um, so before we get into the mechanics of it, let's talk about you know why would you text from Remix? Um, text messaging is uh, it's everywhere. It's it's um, you know if you go abroad anywhere in in um, perhaps places that don't have great cellular signals, cellular data towers, um, you can still text message. It's ubiquitous. And it's an instant form of engagement. You know, if I want to check my Twitter, I have to go to Twitter to check it. If I want to check my email, you know, it's somewhere, I, I have to go check it. But everybody gets text messages. They just pop up right in front of you. You know, it's it's really hard to get engagement that is, um, that's that in front of you. Um, and it turns out this is really easy to do. Um, so you know, why wouldn't you? I'll tell you why. There's, there's a few things that you, you might not want to do this. So using Twilio, which is the platform we're going to leverage, um, there are no free tiers. Now it's not expensive. It's about 10 cents per message, whether you're sending or receiving. It can add up, you know, if you have a runaway hit, it can, it can, it can add up. Um, there's some regulations you have to think about too. You know, everyone's seen those automated messages that say, hey, reply stop to stop getting these messages from your doctor, right? Um, so yes, you have to get consent of your users if you are texting other people. You also have to provide opt-out mechanism. And then beyond that, every country has their own rules and regulations. And Twilio spelled this out on their website. Thankfully, you know, they, they keep track of everything, but you do have to abide by this. So there are some things you have to consider before you jump right in. So let's jump right in. Um, so <laughs> to get started with Twilio, um, there's a try, try Twilio page that you can visit. I would recommend setting up two-factor authentication. Um, you'll have to set billing as well. So any credit card will do. Um, and then uh, here's the fun bit. You get to provision a phone number. Uh, this is a real life phone number, just, just like your cell phone number. It can be a 10 digit code. It can be any area code in the US you want. It can be an international number. Um, it can be a six digit short code. Um, you know, and the prices vary depending upon what you pick. But this is your very own number and you get to keep it. I, I don't know how long I've had mine for a long time and it's still mine. So that's great. Um, and just make sure it has SMS capabilities. That's really all you need. And then before you're done with Twilio, just make note of your account SID and your auth token. Those are your keys into the Twilio ecosystem. You'll plug those into environment variables later. And I'll show you that. So. That's Twilio. Now let's introduce it to Remix. You can start with your own Remix app. That's already a runaway hit. What better way? Um, you can spin up a new Remix instance. You can use a stack, which are kind of out of the box um, starter kits for you that Remix provide. And whatever you do, uh, you're going to install the NPM package Twilio. It's, um, it's a, a node package. It's actually really fully featured and because of that, you don't really want to bundle it and put it client side there. There's too much. It's, it's a really big library. Um, so we're only going to use it server side, but you will install that as a dependency. And then you'll introduce your environment variables, your SID that you wrote down, your auth token, um, the phone number you set up with Twilio, right? Uh, and then the webhook host. So Twilio is going to interact with your website. So you need to know where your website lives, the domain. So that could be the you know, Heroku domain or your fly.io domain or, um, you know, the whatever your name registrar is, is you, can, you can do that. Um, you can name them whatever you want, of course. These are just the environment variables that I chose. Um, so cool, we are ready to start coding. So let's think about the big picture of handling an incoming SMS message. Um, to do that, you need to build a webhook and in Remix world, this works well as a resource route. If you're not familiar with that term, um, a resource route is part of your Remix application, but it doesn't export a default component that's used in the UI. It's just uh, server bits, right? Um, so that's where we're going to define our webhook. And the first thing we're going to do is validate the request. That's really, really important to do when you're dealing with you know, any webhook, but especially with text messages. You need to make sure this is legitimately coming from Twilio and is not, you know, the other 
competitors or whatever, um, or anyone just hitting your application, because um, it's trivial to do. Um, you'll grab the form data off that request, grab the body off that form data, and the body is going to be the message, right? The string that is sent via text. Um, you can perform business logic against that however you wish, right? It's your application. All you have to do is return a text XML response to Twilio with the SMS reply, and it'll go right back to the person that sent you that original message. Now, that kind of sounds like a lot uh, for one webhook to do, um, but it's, it's quite fast in practice and um, quite simple when you see the overview. So what I've got here is my webhook. This is actually what's powering tcshiller.com. Um, and uh, you can see here bits of, of uh, what I was sort of getting on about. I've got my, my validate request. So I, I validate the signature and I validate that it's from me, TC, because I'm the only one that texts my website. Um, if uh, it's not a valid request, I return a 404. That's just me. Um, you can return whatever you need to. Um, and then at the bottom, that's where we're doing our business logic and returning a response. Um, so let's dive in a little bit to each part here. Validating the request. This is my is signature valid method. And the Twilio library export a function to simplify this. In essence, what you're doing is you're grabbing a header off the request. That's the X Twilio signature header. And that contains a hash of the SMS message that was sent to you. And so you call twilio.validate request with your auth token, uh, the value of the Twilio signature header, the webhook URL that it was sent to, uh, and then the form data, the actual contents of that request. One thing about form data, um, if you look on line 24, you'll see that I'm grabbing form data off request, but I'm cloning the request first. Does anyone know why I cloned the request? This is a little gotcha they got me. You can only grab form data off of request once in Node. So if I do it here when I validate, I can't do it later in my application when I'm trying to read the body of the message. But if you clone the request first, you're good to go. So I, I always just clone the request before I grab form data. Um, and that's worked out for me. Um, but yeah, twilio.validate request returns a uh, Boolean, just true, false. And yeah, it's either valid for Twilio or it's not. And you can act accordingly. So yes, so we validated our request. We're grabbing the form data again with data, And now let's do something with that. So here's the actual business object that my application uh, runs. Um, I have a uh, collection of chat directives. So I can actually control the state of my chat through text messaging. Um, I can enable it, I can disable it, I can freeze it, which means you can still see it, but you can't send new messages, um, or I can clear the, the chat state. And so all I have to do is normalize my message, so trim it, uppercase it, and then uh, those directives will be applied if the text message matches the directive string. Um, otherwise, my application assumes that this text message from TC just needs to be pushed to the chat. And this is how I chat with people who are on my website. And then let's see, once I push a message to the chat, then I send a text reply to TC saying I pushed the message to the chat. No problem there. And so finally, we're going to send a reply. So what does that look like? So messaging response is a type that comes from the Twilio library. We're going to new up an instance of that. And um, it has a response.message method, which takes uh, two parameters. One is a to and from object, and the other is the message, the string that you want to send. And then uh, you can see on line 70, this is a content type text XML. That's what Twilio expects. And you just response to string, that response instance, you're good to go. So that goes all the way up to Twilio. Twilio received the, the XML response. They turn it into a text message and their platform sends it to um, your recipient. So um, that's the text message portion. Um, a little bit about the chat state that, um, that I use to power the, uh, the chat. Um, this is the push message method. And uh, there's 
it looks like there's a lot going on here. Really what I'm doing is pushing a, a new record to my database. I use Prisma as um, my interface to my uh, Postgres database. And Prisma is really nice type safe, um, you know, fluent API. I really love using it. Um, Ken C. Dodds, who was mentioned earlier, is a big fan as well. Um, and it, it's proven very, very easy for integration in this application too. So most of what you see here is actually just truncation. So I only keep the last 12 messages in my chat state, truncate the rest. So um, that's most of that business logic. That's all you see is just deleting any excess messages off of my chat state. Um, but uh, there's one thing about the database usage that I wanted to show as well. Um, so with Prisma, with Remix, if you initialize your database using this little hack, which I can't remember where I found it. It might've been from Ryan Florence, I'm not sure. Um, it sort of has that flavor to it. Um, but in essence, if, if I'm in production, I just new up a new Prisma client. Otherwise, if I'm in development, you know, my server could restart often and I really don't want to new up a new Prisma client every time. So I store the Prisma client on a global. So global dot underscore underscore DB source of Prisma client. And then I assign that to my export, right? Um, this is just a little trick to make your development environment a little bit, a little bit faster, a little bit better. Um, that is pretty much what I wanted to show for the chat and the database. Um, so, but that's only half the story, right? So that's incoming text messages. So how do I uh, want to send an outgoing text message from some user action? Um, that's actually extremely simple. This is it. This is how you do it. Uh, use the Twilio library again, of course. You pass in your account SID and your auth token to new up an SMS client. And then you just call dot messages dot create with the to from and the message body, and you're good to go. That'll turn into a text message and make its way to your recipient. Couldn't be easier, yeah. Um, so with that, I'd like to show a demo of uh, how this works. So you all are welcome to go to tcshiller.com right now on your device of choice. Um, and we're going to try this. We're, we're going to see how many text messages my phone can fill up with. Um, so let's, uh, let's visit this now. Um, it's a portfolio site. There's a lot of text. You don't have to read it right now. That's just my story. Um, but at the bottom, that's what we're here for, is the uh, <laughs> chat application. So what I'm going to do is take out my phone, and I'm going to text my application to enable it. And in a few seconds, you should see it pop open. There we go. And I am already getting many text messages. <laughs> this is brilliant. Um, and I can reply from my phone. The domain, I can't, I, I can't see it. Oh, it's, uh, the domain is tcshiller.com. Yeah. And you can see messages from me are in my favorite color. Um, but uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is it. This is, I've gotten messages from all over the world, Iraq, um, <laughs> Europe, everywhere, people looking for jobs. It's, it's extremely, extremely humbling um, to, to get a message. You know, I was, I was in an airport once and I got a text and it was someone <laughs> on my site. So. Brilliant. I am going to disable the chat. <laughs> I'm glad that was tamed. <laughs> All right, that's it. Brilliant. All right. Um, so with that, um, I wanted to genuinely thank you all for listening. Um, this has been an absolute pleasure. And uh, if there are any questions, um, I'm happy to, to address that now. So. The example of this on GitHub somewhere, or you know, I need it's to okay. introduce rate limiting mm -hmm. before I open source it. I got it, and then I'll be okay. Awesome, yeah.
No, this is perfect. I was actually looking for something like this. So this is perfect. Great. I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions in first center on chat? Well, we all know how to get in contact with TC. That's so. right. <laughs> I'm also on Twitter. Um, but yeah, by all means, uh, hit up my site and uh, chat with me. If I'm, I usually turn it off when I go to bed, but um, <laughs> at either time, I'm happy to chat. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you.